national policies can be can important. I think, for example, the fact that this country is, is not adopting a nuclear policy sets a very bad example to the world, and I do hope that soon that that will change. I think we need nuclear power urgently and soon because of the fierce changes of global warming. Uh, we're not going to get by doing what we're doing, and so there won't be any opportunity for a slow drift back. The public are either going to have to like it or accept it. Uh, we could follow the Swedish model. There was probably no country more averse to nuclear power than Sweden round about 1990, shall we say. But they have swung po popular opinion right round so that there is now a majority in Sweden in favour of nuclear power. So it can be done, and that's a good model, I think. But I don't think we have time for that Swedish uh, uh, approach. I think it's got to be done by the government deciding that it, that it really is needed. I am sort of almost amongst the founder members of Green Thinking because I, I produced the instruments that, that validated Rachel Carson's thesis about the damage done by pesticides and so on. Um, and also I first found the CFCs in the atmosphere and started that. So I've got some pretty good, strong, green, original credentials. But I've disagreed with the Greens all right from the very beginning because they are humanists. My concern is for the earth, and I think that concern is vital for people because if we don't care, take care of the earth, the earth will be unable to take care of us. And if we damage it, then, then we damage ourselves. And the Greens do not seem to understand this. They, they are obsessed with personal human problems. They are always frightened that something or other might cause cancer. And I think they, they've sort of looped themselves into this because the general public out there are very frightened of cancer. They've seen relatives die of it, and they know what an unpleasant disease it is. But, and so it's very easy to scare people by telling them that such and such a thing is carcinogenic. And I think the Greens have kind of sucked themselves into a, a rather false and uh, a bad position of using fear of cancer as a way of gaining support. Uh, actually, the, the real dangers come from the earth itself and not from that kind of thing. Just look at, look at the world now. We are living longer than we've ever lived, and yet we all breathed in the dust of those enormous nuclear explosions that were tested in the Pacific in the 1960s. If the Greens had been even a fraction right, we should all be dying of much more of cancer now than we are. We're not. If anything, the rate has dropped. Um, They've they built up a kind of false story based on humanism. I, I say, look at the earth. I'm not against renewables. I don't like windmills. I think in, in this small country, which is almost one large city rather than the country, our countryside that we do have is precious parkland and should not be devastated by industrial developments like wind farms. There are places for wind farms where they will be acceptable and harmless. So it's a case of horses for courses, I think. I'm not against renewables, but they certainly won't fill the gap of energy need. The Greens have got this idea that burning gas is only half as carbon dioxide productive as burning coal. This is true in simple schoolroom chemistry. But in practice, if you burn gas, the supply chain, right from the point of production, right the way to the homes where you burn it in, there are leakages. And you've only to allow 4% of the gas to leak, and you are now back as bad as burning coal because methane is 25 times as potent a greenhouse gas as carbon dioxide. Uh, so unless you take the leakages, which are, I'm told by industry people are largely unavoidable, into account, the, the gas advantage is not there. Nuclear waste really irritates me. It should not be a problem at all. In fact, it, as I think Hans Blixer said, nu the waste from nuclear is one of its great benefits. There's so little of it. 
When one thinks of the mountains, the invisible mountains of carbon dioxide, cubic miles of the stuff that we're dumping into the atmosphere every year and wrecking the planet, to fret about 10 cubic meters of, of nuclear waste, which is, I think, the total output of high-level waste in Britain since they started work, is absurd. It's ridiculous. It isn't a problem at all. I've offered, actually, to use my garden as a repository for the full output of a British nuclear power station. Unfortunately, nobody will take me up on it. I'm serious. I know that put in a decent concrete pit with uh, pipes to take away the, the excess heat from it, I could get free heat for my home and my swimming pool. It would be a waste not to use it. So what, what do you feel about all of the attempts at the moment to combat what um, the global warming, or whatever we're going to call it at the moment, in terms of green energies, and are still, uh, well, at the moment, apparently the world's abandonment of nuclear? I think all of this is well-meaning, but totally misplaced. They see as dangers all, all sorts of imaginary things, rather as the Victorian times. If you lived in a, a, a village in Victorian times, or even up until the 1920s, Villagers would be very cautious about wandering through the churchyard at night because of ghosts and demons that might come out and get them. And I think uh, the fears that have been uh, propagated in recent times about nuclear energy are almost in that class. And uh, just a superstition, a religion, if you like, not a, not a fact and not a fact of science. Well, you were saying something more in the sense that say, you, you know, the, the facts and figures that are given out about Chernobyl, about Fukushima, are very alarming. And, and they appear to come from reputable sources. It, it amazes me that that happens, because the true facts from those, both of those places are almost totally contrary. At Fukushima in Japan, which we, we would have thought was the worst nuclear disaster ever, uh, not only has nobody died, but there's no evidence that anybody was even injured by radioactivity. So, why the, why the fuss? Uh, the same is true of uh, Chernobyl. It's true that some brave firemen who ventured in, in to try and put out the uh, reactor fires and so on died as a result of radiation exposure. But I think the total was about 75, according to the UN, um, UNSCA, EAR agency that investigated. And this is a tiny number compared with the figures that went out on the BBC of hundreds of thousands might die across Europe as a result. It was all nonsense. Where is uh, it coming from, do you think? I don't know. Uh, I wish it, that there were, or hope that there is in the audience, an investigative journalist who will go and find out where all of the money is coming that pays for the green propaganda. And it's very curious because I know the nuclear industry very well. And I said to them a long time ago, why don't you spend some money advertising to counter all this nonsense about nuclear energy? And they said, ah, oh, but only if we could. But you see, we're just a cottage industry and we don't have the money to do it. And when you think about it, a pound of uranium will give nearly as much energy as 100,000 uh, pounds of coal. So the, the throughput of uranium is tiny compared with the throughput of coal or oil, and so they don't have much money. Were you surprised that a country like Germany, that has um, always had nuclear power and, and good green energy as well, suddenly pulled out after Fukushima? Who, who got to the German government, do you think? Well, I, I can only assume the Green Party in Germany did. But uh, because they run in, their government runs in proportional representation, as many European governments do. And one of the problems that, about it is it's a very delicate balance of power. And if, if they lose the votes of one relatively small section of it, it could be quite disastrous. Well, we saw it here uh, with the coalition. I mean, if the Liberals have all decided to say no at some point, mm -hmm. the government would have fallen because there weren't enough. And Germany is more vulnerable that way than we are. So I can only assume that was the reason. Why the Greens did it, I don't know.
I'm not a nuclear fanatic. I don't think it's the right answer to make the whole world nuclear. That's go going too far. I think we have to use the energy we have available that is efficient and it will give us what we need with the minimum damage to the planet. And for densely populated countries like Japan, Britain, Germany, and many other European countries, nuclear energy is almost ideal. It's got a minimal footprint on the Earth, and yet produces huge quantities of electricity at a very reasonable price that everyone can afford, and will keep cities going. And never forget, we are urban people, and a modern city like London or New York would convert to a camp like one of those in Defour in one week if electricity were switched right off everywhere. I think that nuclear has got to evolve in the way all energy systems evolve, and I'm very pleased to see that the latest nuclear plants, and one is now being built in South Africa, are small-scale plants that just provide enough electricity for a small region. They're the so-called pebble bed reactors. They're quite small, quite safe, and uh, very suitable. And that kind of evolution always goes on in engineering. We should remember that the very first nuclear reactors in the world that supplied energy were built in this country, Britain, in the 1950s, in three and a half years, just from drawings. That's all it took, and one or, one or two of them are still working. Personally, and I'm supported in this by no less a dignitary than Hans Blix, who said oh, about two years ago, what's all this fuss about nuclear waste? There's hardly any of it, is there? And that is the point. Um, last Christmas, uh, my wife and I were invited to Sellafield, which is the British depository of new, all nuclear waste practically so far. And we walked around at the plant. It's quite a pleasant plant to walk around. Um, and found that the radiation level with a handheld monitor of mine, not one that had been supplied, uh, was about the same as it is here where we're sitting in this room. In other words, completely safe. Around the building, which was not very large, where 40 years of all of Britain's nuclear waste, civil and military, was stored, the radiation level rose to just above that in the streets of St Ives, a town about 60 miles from here, uh, that happens to be in a rather uranium-rich uh, bit of soil. Uh, still absolutely harmless. Now, all of that waste in that building, and it wasn't a very large building, is in the form of blocks of glass that have been fused. What is the problem, I ask? Now, when you compare that with the carbon dioxide waste, each year we produce, if you froze the carbon dioxide or fixed it as they want to do into something like magnesium carbonate, it would make a mountain one mile high and 12 miles in circumference every year now that is truly deadly and will kill nearly all of us if we go on doing it. So what on earth do you want to fuss about nuclear waste for? If you go to France and much of Europe, you are riding in trains that are powered by nuclear electricity everywhere. French have been very sensible. They run almost everything on nuclear. Um, the, the very Greens who scream about the dangers of nuclear have homes, second homes in France. They're mostly wealthy people. They don't seem to notice it there. Such is the perversity of people. Um, no, but you couldn't have a nuclear-powered car with a nuclear motor in it. That's ridiculous. But what you can do is run it on batteries, and it won't be long before they're all running on batteries, and they can be charged from nuclear electricity. So that's the way it would go. Planes will take longer. I think that the so-called alternative energy schemes, like wind, a solar power, and so on, are pretty 
inefficient and impractical and no solution to our problems at the moment. And I think they're dreamt up by urban people who want to do something natural. They don't like anything industrial uh, and feel that they're doing good. But they're not. That's not a way to run a country or a world. Um, there are some um, what you might call natural power sources like hydroelectricity that are excellent. Why not use them? Norway largely runs on them. Um, and if you've got hydroelectricity, use it. But the sad thing is, we've used about all we can. There isn't any left to spare. One day, maybe, we can get energy from tidal sources. And I do wish the British government had had the sense to build the so-called Seven Barrage. That's a power scheme across the estuary of the River Seven in Western Britain that would provide the output of four major nuclear power stations. But they, they were, there were too many arguments about doing it. And I'm afraid the Greens were the main objectors. They thought it would upset a wildfowl habitat somewhere or other, so it wasn't done. There is a nuclear power station not too far from here at a place called Hinkley Point in Somerset. I think our benighted government, over-influenced by Greens, may well let it shut down in, I think, even as soon as next year. If they do, it would require 3,200 giant turbines to replace it, and they would only work when the wind blew, which it doesn't very often. Hinkley Point has provided most of Devon, Cornwall and Somerset with electricity for the best part of 30 years without any problems whatsoever, so why close it? <laughs>